grab your Bibles, your iPhone, your iPad, your Android, your Galaxy, whatever it is that you have for the Word of God, and open it to a little small book in the Old Testament called the book of Joel. It is a minor prophet named Joel. Just be honest and go ahead and go to the table of contents. And we're going to read from chapter 2. I'm actually going to be preaching from chapter 1 and chapter 2, but I want to start at chapter 2. And I want to read verses 25 and 26 of chapter 2 of Joel. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, the great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and there is no other, and my people shall never be put to shame. I like the beginning of verse 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. I want to talk the theme for our church, the word that I believe God gave me for now and for 2015 is that this is the year of restoration. Somebody got that already. Somebody got a hold of that. Look at two or three people say, it's the year of restoration. Say, somebody, somebody's ready to receive that already. Somebody need to get excited about that already. It is the year, the time, the season that everything the devil took from you, God's going to give it back. I wish I had somebody that could just help me praise the Lord for a moment. Amen. I believe that. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try to be finished by 12, by 11.59. The last few years, they done already busted me out that I keep preaching past 12. So I'm working real hard to be finished by 11.59 so we can bring the new year in without me preaching through the new year. Y'all supposed to say, take your time, Pastor, don't worry about it. But I see where y'all are now. I see what kind of people I'm dealing with. I don't know if you've ever had to speak before, but as a preacher, I always, I never want to stand up and preach and be just blah, 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 blah. Hurry up and sit down. I want to have a word from God. I work diligently in my life to try to stay open to hear from God. And sometimes I know that God is speaking to me because of things that people say to me. I know that sometimes somebody will come up to me and say, Pastor, who told you about my business? Why did you take the whole sermon to talk to me? Or somebody will say, sometimes I'm, feeling in, I'm sitting in church and you're preaching and I feel like you're talking directly to me and nobody else in the building. And I know when people say things like that to me, I know that they feel and hear God talking to them and that the message I have is the right word from God for that day and time. But sometimes you come to preach and you're not really sure whether that word is the word that, that God has for you. There come seasons and times that you just got to go by faith. Uh, and I was struggling with this word. What is the word that God had for the First Baptist and the people to whom God has given us influence with? And a word, uh, the ability to speak into their life. And sometimes I'm, I, 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 uh, for this particular year coming up 2015 and closing out and for tonight and this afternoon when I was preaching, I wanted to know, God, is this the right message? I, I don't know if you know what it's like to feel one moment that it's the right message, then in another moment you say, that ain't going to fly. But just as I came in today at the 12 noon, we had a 12 noon service and a 7.30 service, and then finally tonight, when I came into the early 12 noon service, just before I came into the sanctuary, one of our members grabbed me in the hallway and stopped me and had to testify to me, and they said something to me that 
blew my mind. They started telling me something that was going on in their life, and I didn't quite understand all the details of what they were saying. And so I said, slow down, catch me up, because you, I think you think I know more than I know. I don't know. So when he stopped and slowed down and rewound and gave me the story, the bottom line is this. His son had gotten married and lived in another state, and his wife decided after the son got married that she no longer wanted to be married to him. She left. They were separated. And the son, uh, the son of our member here, uh, relocated to the area here because he thought the marriage was over. He believed the marriage was, was, was never going to get right, get repaired. And so he moved here and he, he stopped me in the hallway to say, and here's the word he said to me. Now he doesn't know, he does not know what I want to talk about. He doesn't know what my message is going to be. And so he stops me in the hallway and he says, Pastor, uh, uh, my son's wife had a change of heart and she has relocated back to, the, she's come down to Maryland. They both moved into our house and now God is working on restoring their marriage oh somebody ought to give God a shout right there that's worthy of praise now what's the significance of that the significance is God used that individual at stopping me in the hallway on my way into the sanctuary to give me the affirmation I needed that what I had planned to preach about was the right thing to preach about since the 12 o'clock service, I've had several people text me and tweet and talk about how this was a word of God for them. I had somebody text me uh, after the 12 o'clock service that they uh, uh, had um, gone home and they were dis a little dis disturbed that one of the members of their family had decided that there was another mem 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 Slow down, Pastor. Just slow down. <laughs> I got to take my time because I'm going to be stumbling over words. If we go past 12 o'clock, we're just going to have to go over past 12 o'clock. I'm trying to rush myself. And so the, the one member of their family has said they never wanted to talk to that other member of the family ever again. It was bothering her. But when she got home from the 12 o'clock service, she said the person who said they never wanted to talk to another member of the family had contacted her and said, can you give me information to contact the person that I said I never wanted to talk to again? I wish I could get more than 17 people to celebrate what God is doing for other people. And then I've had several others. I, the bottom line is I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a word for this house, for this church, and it is a word for you. Look at your neighbor say, it is a word for you. Y'all didn't say it. I need you to say it with attitude. I need you to have your head rolling around on that extra bone in your neck. I need you to give them three snaps and a circle. I need you to do whatever you can to jump up in their grill and tell them this is your year of restoration. This is the year that all the stuff the devil took from you and everything that the devil take the time this is the time your marriage got in trouble your kids gave you hell your finances were jacked up you had you lost your job they repossessed your car they took your house all that stuff that happened to you God is saying tell the people at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden tell the people all over the world tell the people on the internet tell them on television that this is the time in the season that all the stuff the devil took from you God says I'm ready to give it back to you it's restoration season it's restoration time you've been crying you've been depressed you've been down you've been worried but God told me to tell you tonight he's about to do the supernatural in your life he's about to do things and stuff is going to happen that you thought would never happen again you thought it was gone you thought it would never recover it's a recovery day it's a restoration time Now, I thought I ought to talk to you about this because this is exactly what Joel, the minor prophet, is seeking to communicate to the tribe of Judah. He's trying to give them information, insight. He's trying to give them a word based on the circumstances that they are facing. The tribe of Judah is in a troubling situation. They are experiencing some dev a devastating disaster. They wake up one morning and from out of nowhere, a swarm of locusts settle over the land. 
As a matter of fact, the locusts settle and they stay there for a few hours and a few days and they find themselves having devoured everything. The locusts have devoured everything. Somebody say everything. The, the locusts have come and devastated. They've taken the crop. They've beaten up the, the shrubs and the trees and everything has been wiped out. And, and, and matter of fact, can you go to chapter one? I'm going to be walking through chapter one and chapter two for just a moment. I need to walk. Can y'all just let me walk through this for just a moment? Matter of fact, it is such a devastating moment that verse four says this of chapter one. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. In other words, in one verse, it is conveyed that what one group of locusts left behind, another one came behind and took it away. And what they left behind, yet another one came back. Y'all, you've been in those kind of circumstances in life. One incident came in and wiped out your savings, and then, then something else came along and then took away your investments, and then something else came in and it looked like every time you turned around, something Something was happening and something was going on that brought drama up into your camp. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's what they were experiencing. As a matter of fact, the problem is what they didn't realize at the time is that the reason these locusts have come is because the people are living in some level of sin. I know y'all wasn't going to say amen on that point right there. The locusts came because they had disobeyed God. There was some sin in their life. Matter of fact, verse 5 says to them, is talk, the, the prophet is talking to them. He says to them in chapter 1, verse 5, Awake, you drunkards, and weep. Y'all know y'all want to say amen right there. Or oops, or oh Lord, or no. The other services understand, got it pretty quickly because... I thought y'all would get it here pretty fairly quickly. Awake, they were drunkards. They, he says, awake and weep. Well, are you drinkers of wine? For it has been cut off from your mouth. Uh, verse, that's, y'all see that verse number five? For a nation has come up against my land, strong and without number. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the fangs of a fierce lion. In other words, God is trying to convey a message to them that this has happened to them because of their sin. Now when you slide down to verse number 10, it says the field is wasted. The land mourns for the grain is ruined. The new wine is dried up. The oil fails. In other words, their field is wasted. The land is mourning. The grain is ruined. Everything they had invested in, everything they had hoped in is gone. Everything that they thought would bring them benefit has disappeared. In verse number 11, it says, be ashamed, you farmers. Well, you vine dressers for, for the wheat and the barley because the harvest of the field has perished. Everything that they had hopes for bringing them benefit and it has, has perished. Verse 12, the vine has dried up and the fig tree is withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are withered. Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. Everything they had hoped and believed in has disappeared. And some of you are experiencing that very thing in your life. The very thing that you had hopes, the job that you thought would give you a career, the thing that you thought would take you to a place of victory and hope is gone. The trees and the fields are with it. And then it says in the latter part of verse 12, surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. Not only has everything you had hoped in gone away, you're not even happy anymore. You have no joy. You're depressed, you're sad, you're sorrowful. Some of you contemplated doing some horrible things because your joy has withered away. Your joy is gone. But before you do anything, before you harm yourself, your joy might be gone. But my assignment is to tell you tonight that everything that the devil took from you or everything that has come into your life and swiped it away, God is about to restore it in your life. Let me thank all 17 people for that arousal. It's too late for the rest. Y'all too late. Because by the time we get to verse 13, he gives us a call for repentance. Here's what's key, people, my brothers and sisters. Here's what's key. God wants to restore your life, but it calls for some actions on your part. 
And starting in verse 13, he begins to lay out, the prophet begins to lay out what they need to do. They need to do something called repent. That's not a popular word in our day and age today. People want to continue to live their life the way they've been living. But here in the text, the scripture says God wants to do something spectacular for you. But you're going to have to get rid of some of those things in your life that God is not pleased with. You can't expect God to move in your life while you're still holding on to stuff that he said take your hands off of. Lean over to your neighbor. He's preaching better than you're saying amen. Lean over on the other side and tell them you must not be saying amen because he's talking about you. Look at verse 13. Gird yourselves and lament, you priest. Well, you who minister before the altar, come. Lie all night in sackcloth, you who minister to my God, for the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Here's what he's telling you. You got to lament. You got to wail. You got to cry. You got to get in sackcloth. Matter of fact, he said things are so bad for you that you're not even bringing offerings into the house of God. It's right there in the book. I didn't make it up. Do y'all see that right there? It's right there in the book. Your, your finances are so jacked up, you can't remember the last time you brought an offering into the house of God. Verse 14 says, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord and cry out to God. He's making appeal to us that we need to cry out to the almighty God. Somebody tell your neighbor, we got to cry out to God. When we get to verse 15 through 18, it begins to tell us this, that let me tell y'all something. Listen to me very carefully. I'm, all, I'm almost finished. It's 20 minutes before we enter, 19 minutes. We're going to enter into the, to, to, uh, slow down, Pastor. So, we're going into the new year in 19 minutes. But in these 19 minutes, you have an opportunity to situate yourself for God to bring some restoration into your life. In these 19 minutes, you have an opportunity to make a choice, to make some changes. And if I don't know anything else, I know that God gave me this word for this church, for the people who will be here on this night, at this time, in this season, and he wants you to hear it. As a matter of fact, when you get to verses 15 through 18, it begins to say this. I don't have, I'm not going to read it, but just jot it down. Read it when you get an opportunity. God is saying, if you don't repent from what's already happened in your life, the next thing that come in your life is going to be a lot worse than what you've already experienced. And so by the time he gets to chapter 2, he says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm to my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. In other words, God says, I want to blow the trumpet. I want you to sound the alarm. I want you to tell the people that God is calling them to a place of holiness and repentance and to live right. I want you to sound that alarm because if they don't change now, when it comes the next time, it will be horrifying. In verse 12 of chapter 2, look at verse 12. It says, now therefore says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. Verse 12 of chapter 2, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. I like that verse right there. God says, I don't want you just to change your clothes. I want you to change your heart. Because I learned that church folk know how to look churchy when they come to church, but they know how to live like hellions when they leave church. Return to the Lord your God, verse 13 says, for he is gracious and merciful. I like this verse. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Return to the Lord your God, verse 13, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. I like that. I like the fact that we serve a God who is gracious and merciful. Anybody here glad that God didn't give you what you deserve? I don't want a pastor of people who think they got it all together when in fact their lives are raggedy. I want a pastor of people who recognize that they deserve judgment, but God didn't judge you like he could have judged you. Oh, I bless his name because he kept me when I deserve to be kept. I'm telling people all the time, God, please don't be fair with me. Because if he gets fair with me, he'll have to whip me. But I thank the Lord that the text says in verse 13, he is slow to anger. Anybody here glad that God is slow to anger? And of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. He'll change his mind about what you ought to get. Somebody ought to be getting saved right now because we serve a God who changed his mind about giving you what he should have given you. 
both the trumpet in Zion, verse 15 says, consecrate a fast, there it is again, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, go, gather the, the children, the nursing babes, get everybody together and let's repent, he says. The reality of the fact is, is by the time we get over to verse number 25, he lists the things that have challenged them the swarming locusts have eaten and the crawling locusts and the consuming locusts and the chewing locusts all these locusts have come somebody look at your neighbor and say these locusts have come in my life y'all are too slow so the, the 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 swarming locusts are the locusts that increase and bring confusion they do what they do quickly the swarming locusts is when something comes up in your life and it's suddenly you didn't see it coming you hadn't expected it but all of a sudden bam there it is in your life the crawling locusts are the young locusts the strong locusts that don't seem to ever want to die or give up the consuming locusts are the ravengers they come and reap havoc and damage based on what's left over the chewing locusts will devour it is one thing after another as soon as you get through one issue another issue is coming as soon as you paid one bill and thought you had to scramble to make get the money together here's something else that comes that's knocking at your door these locusts have come but God told me to tell you tonight that everything they have taken from you he said I am the God who will restore I know you're crying I know you've been weeping I know you felt like you didn't deserve it but God told me to tell you to focus in on the first part of verse 25 I will restore to you the years that they've been coming some of you've been going through this for years year after year you had hopes and aspirations that every year would be better but every time you turned around the next year got worse than the previous years but this is the time God told me to tell you all that drama is over it's over somebody tell your neighbor it's over it's over your crying is over your drama is over your pain is over it's done with the locust will have no more authority in your life God said I will restore look at your neighbor say I'll take that I'll take it I'll take it I'll take it Tell them with fervor, passion. Tell them with, with, with strength. God's going to restore. I've been crying long enough. Y'all ain't hearing me. God says, I will restore. It is the year of restoration. Oh, I feel a shout coming on me. Look at verse number 23. I'm sorry. Uh, look at verse number 23. Verse 23 of chapter 2. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Oh, no, no, that's not what it says. Let me reread it. Be glad then, you children of Glenarden. Go ahead. Tell your neighbor, be glad then. And rejoice in the Lord your God hallelujah I'm trying to tell y'all God is about to do the spectacular in your life for he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause I'm in verse 23 of chapter 2 and he will cause the rain to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month the threshing floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil God is about to break open the windows of heaven and do something spectacular in your life who am I preaching to tonight somebody here you've been crying you've been moping you've been concerned you've been depressed your joy is gone your marriage is on the skids your children giving you hell your health is going down the pike you don't know what to do where to go but God told me to tell you lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted up you everlasting doors the king of glory is coming in and he is going to bring something powerful in your life what is it pastor I'm glad you asked the question he says in verse 25 I will restore to you the years how's he gonna do it verse 26 look at verse 26 he says you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied there's the first thing he's gonna do he's gonna take you and put you in a place called plenty somebody say I'm about to go into a place called plenty you ain't been there in a long time you 
you may have visited plenty every now and then but God told me to tell you right here verse 26 you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied hold up y'all don't stop don't shout there that's the first point somebody say he's gonna move you from broke to prosperity he's gonna move you from being alone to that situation is about to change he's about to move you from hungry to being satisfied somebody tell your neighbor I'm about to go from broke to plenty hold up he didn't stop there he said and praise the name of the Lord your God he's gonna move you to the second point a place called praise can I talk about God restoring your praise some of you have lost your dance you've lost your ability to worship God life has been so tough and the drama has been so painful that you found it difficult to even worship God but I'm about to tell you tonight that when you go into 2015 you're gonna seek God bringing your praise back he's gonna give you the ability to give God a shout and a celebration like you ain't never gave him before you're gonna be dancing and ain't nobody playing any music you're gonna be running and ain't nobody chasing after you you're gonna be crying tears and ain't nobody done anything to make you sad he's about to give you a praise back somebody say my praise is about to be restored my praise my praise I ain't danced in a long time I haven't ran around in a long time I haven't shouted in a long time your praise is about to come back I gotta hurry up but hold up look here verse number uh, uh, 26 gives me the third thing I call it purpose somebody say purpose it says in verse 26 right here in verse number 26 it says who has dealt wondrously with you oh I like that right there what does that mean pastor it means that God has been dealing wondrously with you now that's a problem text for me because it means matter of fact uh, uh, if you read the last part of verse 25 the text says it well let me be verse 25 it talks about the the swarming locusts and the crawling locusts and the consuming locusts and the chewing locusts and it says right under that my great army which I sent among you he said he sent it and then at the last near the last in the middle of verse 26 he says that he has dealt wondrously with you and I know you, if you really reach and think this through, the challenge is that the question is, did God, was he the one that bought the locusts? And why is that meaning that God worked wondrously with me? See, some of you have a theology that thinks only good things come from God. But my assignment is to tell you that some of what has been happening to you, God sent it into your life. I know you blaming the devil, and the devil might have been the creator of it but God had to give it permission to come into your life and why would God let the, the, the locusts come into your life he would let the locusts come because you were too arrogant to recognize that it was him who woke you up every morning it was him who gave you the job that you had it was him who took you where you are in life and so sometimes he's got to take stuff from you so you will recognize who gave it to you some of y'all are only in church right now because you hit the bottom of the barrel and you didn't have any other place to turn and because you lost everything you turned to God he dealt wondrously with you Are y'all listening to me? In other words, he had a purpose. Uh, this is third, third point is a purpose. Somebody say purpose. He had a purpose for those locusts. He had a purpose for your drama. He had a purpose and it, whatever it takes for God to bring you to him, he will make it happen so you turn your heart to him. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody tonight got locusts all around them. You got locusts in your marriage and locusts with your kids and locusts on your job and you got locusts everywhere. And my job is to tell you that before the locusts chew everything up, you ought to turn your heart to Jesus. You ought to repent and turn around and let him get rid of the locusts and restore you back to where he wants you to be. Do I have any witnesses up in here tonight?
Somebody high five your neighbor and say there's a purpose. Matter of fact, testify. Say God's been dealing wondrously with me. He's been working this thing. He's been changing this thing. He's been, he's been working with me. Stop blaming the devil and tell, realize God is trying to get your attention. He, he brought those locusts to make you repent and make you turn around. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you are here tonight. And you ain't going to leave here the same way you came in here. You're going to walk out of here being restored. You're going to walk out of here with a new walk and a new relationship. Jesus died on the cross so your sins could be forgiven he died and was buried and got up out of the grave with all power in his hands because he loves you and he wants a life with you hold up let me close here's my final point did y'all see the peas that I did plenty praise purpose those are peas. I need y'all to show me some love for working on these peas for y'all. Because I wanted to present a powerful proclamation of, about the Prince of Peace. I wanted to perpetrate something that would be powerful in penetrating and make your heart palpitate with excitement because God was bringing plenty back into your life and bringing praise back into your life and bringing purpose back into your life and here's my final thing the last part of verse 26 says and my people shall never be put to shame I call that protection the devil had you before but God is giving you protection high five three people and say he's given me protection the devil had his way long enough but God has given me protection tell him protection he's bringing you protection hallelujah I gotta close now I, I feel a shout now I decree tonight I prophesy tonight I proclaim to you tonight that 2015 will be a year of restoration he's gonna restore your soul restore your marriage restore your mind restore your heart restore your finances restore your children restore your job restore everything that the devil took from you it's the time of restoration hey 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 restoration is coming in restoration is stepping on in there get ready lift up your hands oh ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors the king of glory is coming in he will restore He's rebuking the devil. He's binding Satan. He's getting rid of the locusts. For once in your life, you're going to be able to catch up. It's the catch up year. You behind long enough. It's the catch up year. Catch up, catch up. Somebody say catch up. Tell yourself, catch up. I'm going to catch up. I'm, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to catch up. I've been behind long enough. It's catch up time. Go ahead, put it up there. Put it up there. Hallelujah. I feel a shout. I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost all deep down inside. We got 25 seconds. Put it up there. Go ahead. We're going. We're going to come out of locust life. We're about to enter into 
restoration life, plenty life, praise life, protection life. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Give him a praise. Happy restoration year. Happy restoration year. Happy restoration year. Trust me when I tell you, trust the word of the Lord. Some of you by this time tomorrow, you're going to see some things changing in your life. you <laughs> maybe you don't have a shot but I'm shouting for you because if you only knew where God was about to take you you would run around this building he is going to restore
There are two kinds of worshipers. There are those who worship when it happens. Then there are some, the second kind, that worship whether it happens or not. I believe in praising him whether it happens or not. I'm tired now. I can't dance you as long as I used to be able to. It's the year of restoration. Everything that the locusts have eaten over the years, God shall restore. He said, so I will restore. Your vats will be refilled. Your barns will be full. Hallelujah. All the stuff you thought, some of y'all are here tonight, there's some stuff that happened in your life you thought would never get right. This is the year God's going to make it right. It's the year that God's going to fix it. You done tried everything you know how. All you need to do is one thing. Repent. That's the word right there. Repent. Whatever's in your life that shouldn't be there, get rid of it. If somebody here tonight needs to get saved. Come on down here right now. You need Jesus in your life? Just come on right now. Somebody needs Jesus. Don't be ashamed. We're going to shout and give him the glory when you come. Come on, amen. Where are you? Come on, right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.